getting to um, siphoning off of energy. I want to control of energy. I want to address this question that dear sister Callie posted in the very beginning. So I'm, I'll read it off in case you guys don't um, don't see where, where this is at. So she says, um, hello again. I had a question about how to protect our energies from the collective. I believe I'm an empath and I am struggling to find peace in times of chaos in the world. Can you help me? When the muggles wake up, it changes my mood. My gift is seemingly more like a curse lately. Thank you for your time. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so empaths have a particular, that struggle's real, right? Because we've cultivated a particular um, acuity sensitivity because of our upbringing, um, usually uh, about, you know, uh, sensing when, when people's emotional states are so. So that very act of tuning in to all these people and being impacted by that energy is us putting feelers out there. We're putting feelers out there to take the temperature, the emotional temperature of the room or the collective. We're putting, we don't know that we're doing this, but our survival mechanism and our subconscious is doing that. We're, we're putting feelers out to see where the, where, you know, say how the family is in the house or how people are at work or what's it like on the, going to be like on the subway today or, or whatever. Right. So what we do we have a whole course on proper energy management. It's called Light Body 101. It's our core curriculum. And it, it, what's happened is that we have never been taught appropriate energetic hygiene. And as empaths, it is the game changer to shift our, our abilities from being a curse into one of the greatest blessings ever um, because, uh, because we teach you proper energy management. The number one thing is how to keep your energy contained within your own field. You, you actually, without shielding, you actually hold your life force energy in a very consolidated, focused way, right? You stay behind your eyes in your heartbeat. And when, you're do, when you do that, your energy becomes a really um, tightly woven uh, uh, fabric of energy and things don't get in. So you don't really need to shield. Where we need to shield is when we're not present with our body and we're looking off into the future or we're, we're stuck on something awful that happened in the past or we're thinking about somebody who's not with us or we're directing our energy in some kind of way. We're actually putting those, those tendrils that would be normally woven real tight like this are actually now unwinding and going out to as feelers into the world. You see what I mean? And it could be the 4D field. It could be family that's directly in our in immediate space. There's lots of reasons why we do it. Lovers, children, all those things. So we first need to get over the beliefs, discover and get over the beliefs that we have that tell us we, our safety relies on those tendrils being out there. And we start calling them all home and allowing them to tightly weave back home with us. Stay, staying within our emotional field, staying within our energy field, staying within uh, our, our home frequencies. So unplugging from the collective, uh, protecting yourself from the collective, that is, that is all directly related to us healing our, our trauma, healing our victim wounds. And all that is put in place to keep us in a dis dis feeling disconnected or feeling alone that's all one of this that's all part of the matrix game part of that saturn black cube game is to trick us into believing that we are alone or we are disconnected or we're better off being disconnected when really the opposite is true and and so once we start changing how we engage with our energy in the world then we can start readdressing these things in a way that um, we're asking different questions. We're not asking questions that validate our wounding. We start asking questions that show us a way through, a way through um, the blame game, okay? So cleaning your energy every day is part of um, having good energetic hygiene. And uh, we teach many ways to do that. One, one way that's very simple and effective is that before you go to bed at night, Every night before you go to bed, close your, you know, close your eyes and, and let yourself go into a gentle meditative state and you start bringing all the interactions, all the places that you've been that day into your awareness, the people, the places, even the animals, the plants, everything. Just start bringing those things into your awareness 
and, and notice if you left any of your energy there. Maybe you left some of your energy there because you want to know what's going on. Maybe you left your energy there because you thought it was really beautiful, peaceful, and you didn't want to leave. There's, there's a whole myriad re, uh, of reasons why we would do such a thing. But what's important is that we, that we call our energy back. All that energy that we left, we call it back to ourselves. Electronics is a, is a big one, is a really big one, because we're looking at a digital screen all day. We don't realize this, but our energy is actually going into that. We're going into a digital reality with our energy, right? So you call your energy back from that. Imagine what that digital field looks like, what it might look like, and you purposely with intent, focused intent, call your energy back from that, okay? So when you, if you do that every single night before you go to bed, you're gonna start noticing a shift. You're not gonna be as drained uh, energetically, you won't be um, as standoffish to people. You won't feel so exposed because more of your energy is home. And that weave, that that weave of luminescent strands of your energy becomes tighter, 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 and then nothing can get in. Okay. The other thing I would say is quit smoking pot. <laughs> okay. Now. I'm not talking, you know, an occasional, occasional puffer here or there or whatever. I'm talking about the chronic, the chronic habit because marijuana, it's a, it's a medicine. It's a very valuable medicine actually, but it's what, what happens if, if people smoke a lot of it, like multiple times every single day, these tightly woven um, energy field, it's so yin, it's so, it's so expansive that it starts loosening the field like this. And then you start developing habitual holes in your energy where things can just come in and the things that are coming in are a frequency match to your already existing pain your already existing wounding okay so that's a real thing so um so how you live your life has a lot to do with with your relationship to the collective how you respect your energy has a lot to do with how you live in the collective calling your energy back every night is a wonderful place to start to, to so to see the difference and you know I would say even you know I've used the label muggles before and uh, I, I say it jokingly but but if you feel into the sentiment behind that you'll realize that there's anger and resentment there and that is like because of rejection and pain and other kinds of things that would be a great place to start on you know why do I why do I dislike these people so much right or why because it's usually because they've hurt you or they've caused a lot of pain or there's a lot of persecution being told you're crazy you know what i mean there's a lot of toxic exchange but what happens is that we open ourselves up to that exchange energetically before it actually happens in the 3d okay so on the energetic is where we have the awareness. So it's in, on the energetic, we can, we can totally counteract, mitigate that exchange so it doesn't happen. And that's that tightly get, make, really let your um, practice weaving your energy field, let it get really tight in its weave. Um, and then you're going to not be as susceptible to those sorts of things. 